Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. One of the dangers of having the hobby of collecting retro computers is, of course, having things that are broken, and especially if you buy things like this Atari joystick for three dollars from Retro Taku, you expect there's likely to be something wrong with it, especially says this item does not work. So if you recall in the previous video, I made this, and this is a very simple circuit, but a very handy circuit, because you can use it to test your joysticks. So if you see here, in fact, it might be quite difficult to see because of the light, and then I'm gonna to have to turn that off. There is some element of testing there, and we can see from this joystick that it, the right doesn't work. The other directions, and even the fire button, if you hit it hard enough, do work. So I thought we will start learning about how to make PCBs. You've seen me make PCBs before using a milling machine and of course fabricated in the Far East. All those PCB way in jail, CPCB adverts that everybody else does. But have a look at this. This is making them yourself using nothing but a Sharpie. Well, there's a few more things, but Sharpie is the main thing. And you can see this is an old one I did years ago. It's probably a 20 year old piece of PCB. And I used a Roland plotter and that's a plotter with an XY tray and a little pen and it just literally goes round and draws. And I basically use that to draw the circuit on here. But I'm gonna be freestyling it with just a Sharpie. And I'm just gonna check this Sharpie works. You can see it does work fine. And you'll notice that this piece of the PCB is quite shiny because I've got something that looks a bit like an eraser. It says PCB polisher on it. That I've sort of scrawled on there so people don't lose it. But it's basically a piece of emery. And we don't need this whole board for what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna try to buff it up anyway. And if you're doing this, try to do a few different directions just to make sure that you've got uniform um, scratches effectively all over it and then take a piece of regular just kitchen roll and just give it a buff and you can see that you'll get a nice shiny finish we're going to work in this part of the board the next thing we need to do of course is to put our circuit down and I couldn't remember what circuit I used for that it's pretty simple as it turns out, I went on to the old Atari Age forums because you can see, nice and simple. You're actually just putting the joystick connects to here, of course. You've got the power in line with the ground, so the ground has the power, and then it just goes via the LEDs to all the up, down, left, right. And you can see they're numbered here. So up is pin one, down is pin two, so on and so forth. And if you're curious about what those are, you can look at this, and that gives you the pinout of the port. I am going to have a quick eyeball of the port, see if there are numbers. There are numbers. One is this top left corner, so we can work from that. We won't worry about that just yet, because we can do the rest of the circuit. So we've got our board here, and we've got to imagine now what components we're going to use. So we're going to have to obviously work this part out, which is going to be a bit tricky. But before we do, we know the rest is a battery and LEDs, okay? So we can decide how we want our LEDs. So we can say, I'm gonna hold it this way. So I'm gonna go draw the outline of the PCB. So let's just go for something like this. I think that will be fine, because I'm actually gonna cut this out, uh, which is actually a bit stupid what I did. I should have gone to the edge of this board. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's do it this side. <laughs> Go to the edge of the board. You don't want to waste any board, so I'm going to do this. Okay, so imagine that should be enough for your PCB to give yourself some boundaries to work to. So now we have to have five LEDs, and we know that an LED is... I uh, don't quite have one here, but you can see from this capacitor leg, that's the kind of same pitch spacing that you've got on most things. So I'm just going to do a dot and a dot so you can say that's up and then right down and left they're not very even you could use a ruler or something if you really care so that is going to be your main pads but what you can do is make them a little bit bigger because you're going to drill a hole in those and you can always bend those led legs so just give yourself more room and if you do have one of those CD writing pens that used to be so popular, 
Those had a much tinier tip, which was super useful. So we know uh, all these LEDs are going to have a common. So we're going to have to work out that common. And that common is where the battery is going to hook in. So we can tr try to keep something a bit simple by... Let's put the battery contacts here. So nice big contacts here. Okay. And we know one of those is going to go straight to that port. So let's work out which way do we want our common to be. So if we decide this one is going to be the common, we can draw a line from here to here. So this is basically the positive. So this, this, this one will be the positive. You can even draw a little plus by that if you want to later. And we can hook that to here. So that's that LED and that LED. And of course we could hook it to that LED. And then this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we want to make sure we can still root stuff. So I think we can actually just go like that. So then you have that LED. So now that all these the LEDs, actually apart from this bottom one, are wired up. And I think we can even do that. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. So we've got the up, down, left, right, and fire button all hooked up from that score. And now we have to interface to this. So this is where actually some common sense is probably important because the chances are of us now hitting these pins in the right order, so up, down, left, right, are going to be pretty slim without bridging over each other. So to, to design it properly, that's really what you ought to have done. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try as best as I can to copy the pins on here onto the board. So you can see it's going to go in that way which means these four pins will be at the front. So I'm just going to draw four pins. I went a bit quiet there because I was trying to make sure I was doing them semi-accurately. And then the other side you have five pins which we know are in between and they're spaced about that. One, two, three, four, five. Now I can even see my drawing is not great on these, so I'm just going to have to draw them quite large. And when we drill these out, we're going to have to hope that we'll be able to get them in the right place. But hey-ho, that's fine. <clears throat> so now we know we have LEDs for up, down, left, right on pins 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the fire button is on six, so that will be down here. So this is the six is the fire button. So actually that works to our favor in some respects. So this is the fire button one. So let's hook that one up first because that's the kind of easiest. So I'm gonna come down. You can see the pen was looking a bit light there. Make sure it keeps nice and inky or you will lose those tracks when we etch this. And that's gonna be a bit tricky for us to recover. So up, down, left, and right. So the problem is we can do left and right quite easily. So let's do left and right now. So that's left and this is right. Okay, so we've got up, down. We've got, <laughs> sorry, left and right. Up, down's not done yet. So we need to bring up and down to these points here. So I can't see a way, unless you were very good with a pen, you probably could have got the tracking in between those. Normally that's that's how you would actually do it if it was a regular PCB because you can draw a very fine line through those. But unfortunately I've not done that, not allowed for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take down to here and I'm going to draw a big circle there and I'm going to put a jumper on the back of the board to there so there's going to be a bridge going across there it's going to jump across and then I'm going to do the same thing here for up and I'm going to draw another one there and I'm going to come down like that and I think that's our circuit I think that's going to be fine we just have to hook up the last one though which is pin 8 which is going to be the ground which is this guy here which, knowing my luck, you can see I've got this bit of sticky sticky on the edge of the board. Which is going to prevent me from doing that nicely. So I'm just going to try to clean that off enough. Let's 
See, I don't mind if the etch resist is on this bit. I don't care. A bit of copper on the edge of the board doesn't hurt anybody. But when we need it, <laughs> we do need that bit of copper. So there is our negative. Now, I have made a mistake here, of course, because we do need, among all of this, a resistor. And to fit that resistor, it would obviously fit it in that path here. Here would be a good spot, I would say. So I'm just going to erase it out again. <laughs> See, this is a handy thing, isn't it? You can just fix these. And I'm going to put a nice big circle here, nice big circle here, and our resistor can go in those points. So I think we're pretty much good to go now. So I'm just going to cut this out, and then I'm going to show you the next step. So here I have a tub of warm water. You can see there's a bit of steam coming off it. And just off camera, I have a bucket containing a whole load of ferric chloride, which I have had, admittedly, for the best part of 20 years. And you can see it comes in quite nice, munchy-looking balls, normally when the bag's sealed. And in fact, there is a sealed bag in there that's still like that, whereas this one's turned into mush. So I'm just going to pull out a chunk of it like that that looks a bit like dog food. And again, be careful. You probably ought to wear protective goggles and all sorts of stuff handling that. Just take precautions. I mean, when I were a lad, this was just a massive tank of this, and you just chucked it in, and you didn't really have any precautions. But nowadays, people probably know what's good and what's bad for you, and I suspect this probably isn't great for you. So I'm just going to mix it in. And I'm not entirely sure... On... Whoa! Sorry, I just splashed myself there. I'm not entirely sure on the ratio you want. Um, I'm just going to add more, because <laughs> I definitely want it to work. But there is an optimal ratio, and the idea was, of course, you put this in a tank called a bubble tank or an etching tank, and it basically held your PCBs in vertically whilst pumping air through. So I do hope that this will work, because it seems to have had some sort of reaction with moisture, but it really shouldn't matter too much, because you just mix it in water normally anyway. But yeah, I can t t tell you, it, as a granules, it's definitely a lot easier to work with than mush. God, at this point, it was probably easier just to cut a hole in the bag, pour the water in the bag. <laughs> oh, and it does smell. It is, it is, it is toxicish stuff. I think it does dissolve certain materials and metals. So yeah. Right. Well, that's definitely going to be enough. So I'm going to try to put this lot back in the tub in some sensible way. And make sure you've got plenty of ventilation when you're doing this. And just mix in your granules, whatever you've got, paste, <laughs> mush. And try not to splash yourself in the eyes. I imagine it's going to be brutal if you do. But it should look something like that. And there are different materials you can get for doing this job, I believe. I've definitely seen people on YouTube doing something similar, very different coloured stuff. Okay, all right, I'm done splashing everything now. Let's get this board in. It looks nice and rich. Now, the reason you want to be careful with it, with the right temperature, you, know, you want it a bit warm and the right uh, um, thickness, concentrate, is that if it's in the liquid too long, there's always a danger that it might bubble off your text, you know, literally burn off your uh, sharpie the same way that if you were just running your sharpie under a tap would eventually do it. But what you can do is leave it like that. But what I like to do is I just like to just, you see that? A gentle back and forth. Unfortunately, we've made it in such a way that we can see what's going on. Now we'll zoom in a bit to actually have a closer look. If you made it a little bit less volume, you'd actually have to see your board floating in there. But if I poke at it, if I can find it, you'll see on the edges that it is starting to actually take away that copper. Oh, that's a good way of doing it. Look, it's like panning. Not like the trip panning the doctor said I needed. If you look there at the bottom edge, you can definitely see there's a, a difference. You see there? You can see the PCB 
uh, material here, the copper's been come off on that edge. So it's almost there. It's almost there. So I feel we're pretty much there. There's just the absolute tiniest hint of a bit of copper on the face right there. And you'll see that will go pretty much instantly as soon as we agitate this a little bit. So we're pretty much there. So I have a jar here. It's a nice tall jar. And the reason I selected it is because it actually will fit into the container that holds the ferric chloride crystals. So that's actually quite convenient. So I'm going to have a look at this board. Let's fish it out now. Yes, that's all done. And in fact, I think we are getting a little bit of the bit we didn't want to happen where it undermines. So you just pop that there for now, should be fine. We'll actually get some water on it, but before we do, I'm just going to dab it off. So you want to rinse it off basically, but I think this should actually serve the same sort of purpose. You can see there's a lot of staining coming off this, so be very careful. I think that's probably the worst part of this is that if you get it on something, it's going to stain it. But let's just pop that in a jar now, because if you leave it in this container, I promise you, you're going to hit this container over and it's going to go everywhere and ruin your man cave or office or wherever that you're doing this. So yeah, get that done. So I'm going to pop that back in. I'm going to rinse everything under the tap and we're going to come back. After your rinse, you'll be left with something that looks, <laughs> just throw it away, uh, looks like this. And that's your PCB. And you do have some options here when it comes to cleaning it. You can just dash it probably with some acetone or IPA and it will work on that. Or if you're a bit careful, take your block out because this copper should be still relatively thick and just give it a very gentle buffing. Now something you could do now as well, if you have it, and I unfortunately can't find the, the crystals, is you can get a cold crystal process. So it's something very simple, similar like this, but you actually are melting some sort of tin. I'm not sure exactly what it's made of, but it will tin the board. And that's awesome if you get that stuff, because then you'll have that proper professional looking PCB. But for our purposes, this is more than adequate. And you can see it's starting to buff up and look quite circuit-like. Let's get this filth off my desk. And you can take this as far as you want. It doesn't really matter that it's particularly clean, just as long as where you're going to be soldering is clean. But that's up to you. You've put the effort in. Give it a little wipe. And you can see now we are ready for the drilling. And we've got to be careful. I wasn't uh, paying too much attention to this because we are actually mounting our components on the back. So we really need to make sure all our polarities and things are correct. But that's fine. And just to show you here, that's a bit of erosion. So that's when your pen isn't particularly good, you know, where, where you've pushed a bit weird and the ink doesn't look quite right. That's the sort of thing that can happen. And that's also what can happen. You see there's a little nibble, nibble there in the edge. I'll zoom in a bit more. That's because the ferric chloride actually has started to go in from underneath, underneath the um, Sharpie line. So yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's because if, if, you, if you're agitating it, make sure you agitate in all directions. Because I was agitating it primarily this direction. You get more trying to flow in from the side that way. But it's fine. Now comes the drilling stage. So if you've got one of these kits, it's great. You could see I actually have a good selection of tiny bits. And I like to have this little micro drill gadget for making those holes. But if you have something like a Dremel, you might be able to get away with that. So we're going to find a suitable drill size. Ugh. If you can open your drill box. Why isn't it working? Okay, that one's okay. Don't know what's happened to there. It's just seized. Um, I reckon we might get away with a mill, to be honest with you. I mean, that's I know it's pretty pretty huge in PCB terms. In fact, let's go for that one, which is 9.5. But you can see it's actually pretty big drill bit, but it's it's just a lot smaller than our holes, and that's all it has to be. But yeah, on a normal PCB, you would, wouldn't dream of using a bit this big, but that's fine. Just 
just getting it into the chuck there. Now, I do have for this mini craft drill an actual little bench thing, a little drill press, and that is really good. So if you're going to do it with that, and you can just use a drill press, literally you push a lever and it just puts this straight down, does it nice and controlled. I'm just going to do it by hand, we'll see how we fare with that. It does like to wander. Not too bad. So you can see that didn't take too long for those. And now these, I'm just going to take a little bit more time over them because we have to make them a touch more accurate. And we are ready. So the first thing I'm going to do to this is just get rid of these guys because I didn't factor them in the design at all because I figured we had enough to contend with rather than trying to get this mounting solution sorted so I'm just going to cut them off. See no problem whatsoever. Let's see if there's any chance this thing is going to line up. Uh, yeah I, I did get it a bit awry in some places I have to admit. It might take some cajoling but I think I can get it. I think I think I got it. We just got to bend a few. Surprisingly even to me it actually has gone in. It's a little bit wonky but I think we can bend that. Yeah look. <laughs> that is actually not too bad. So I think before anything happens, like it tries to escape, we should just solder that. So I do have fluxed solder. And in fact, I'm gonna, I was gonna use the thin stuff, like you can see here, but I'm gonna go to my thicker stuff here, just so we've got a bit more to play with. Yeah, that's okay. And because you don't have solder resist it will flow down those tracks which you might not be used to so be a bit careful in fact i should have pushed on those because it's it's a bit more meat that can go through these holes so yeah maybe apply some pressure on the back as well if you're doing it yeah i've got a bit more pokage through the holes now i'm just going to touch up those last couple but yeah, it's not rocket science, is it? That looks pretty good. And then here, you can see we have that little bit of a dink. You can repair it, look. I can actually see there's a bit of a discontinuity, actually. So it's something we do want to repair. Oh, and I think I've made it worse. Not a problem. We'll just use a little bit of wire here, which I'm going to cut off. snips off camera I do apologize let's just repair that bit of track like so and that that's electrically repair it's not pretty but you know you can you can pretty it up if you want but that's fine 
So I think we need to go and raid the LED drawer, but before we do, let's get our resistor in, because that's an easy one. I'm not quite sure what we needed, but I do have a 220 ohm. It's near enough. Near enough. It doesn't quite work. It's fine. And you can see, I should have made those holes a little bit further apart, so it's going to be a very tight placement, but you can do it. We well, can do it. Just use your nails. There's your resistor in. And that looks like it's got plenty of meat on those legs. You're definitely not going to have any trouble on those old turkey legs. Get them soldered in nicely. Like that. And of course, we're just going to trim those. Now I'm going to array the LED drawer. So what's super important about the LEDs is not so much the polarity because you've not connected the battery up yet so you could just change that on the fly. That's not a big deal. But you do need to make sure that they are all wired up correctly in terms of their, if you're going to go positive or negative, are, are the common, right? So if you remember how we drew it, we did have common things. So I'm just going to mark them on here. In fact, I'll mark them on the back so we know. So it's this guy here connects to this guy here connects to this guy or gal. So we need to make sure everywhere we've got a dot, the same leg of the LED is in each. So we're going to go with long leg positive. So let's just pop the long leg by the dot. And then we know we're going to be correct all the way around. There's even the chance when we flip the board, you'll be able to see that long leg too, and that'd be quite handy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solder one leg each because I really want to make sure they're sitting flush. They're already going to have issues with the whole spacing, so they're likely to be a little bit cockeyed. I mean, you could see, actually, that's not too bad. I think you could... Yeah, that's actually not too bad. But you see on the back, definitely not quite sitting flat on the board. So I feel I need to have them sitting flat. It... it uh, it affects my some sort of OCD. I can't allow it to not be flush. Yep, that's a good one. I don't know what's better to be flush and cockeyed or to look good and hover. I mean, that's, that's what they look like when they're sitting flush. They're not quite perfect. Right, let's just quickly mash these ones on. We're almost done. I'm not going to lie, I didn't expect to have to debug this. Ow, hot. <laughs> okay, I screwed up. And I'm sure there was a bunch of you shouting in the video while I was making it. But yes, um really big bonehead move and I'll tell you why. I'll give you an example. Pin up in the Atari joystick connector here is this pin here, that's pin 1 and ground is this pin here which is pin 8. Yeah, 1 and 8. So you've got 1 and 8. But you will notice if we do this that actually we have wired to ground pin number 7 and this pin one actually goes to nothing. And the pin that does go to up is this one here, which is actually pin five. So I've made a big mess up of that pin out. And I'm kind of embarrassed about it and we're kind of annoyed because this PCB is really nice. And I'll show you it does work. So if I just literally just put something in there that shorts it out, you can see we've actually got the connections flishing and a flashing. If I can actually find the ground. Yeah, there you go. It's doing a bit of a disco impression. So it does actually work. The board is lovely to work on in that it's nice big thick copper traces, easy to solder, um, very robust and tough. But I've just messed up this pin out totally, like absolutely totally. To the point that I can't even think, you know, it'd only work if I could take this off and mount it that way, which honestly, I'm not even sure is feasible because you can't solder it. So, there you go. At least the process is correct, drawing it was correct, 
making it, drilling it, polishing it, all of that, soldering it, great stuff. Operation though on this particular thing, poor. Wah, wah. I do hope that's been of some use to you though. If you have had a go at making your own ferric chloride etched PCBs using Sharpies, please let me know down below. And of course, you can always join us on the Discord for more PCB chat. As ever, thank you for watching. I was just desoldering it because I was going to have a, another go, but I just thought, I think I can get this kind of working. Bear with me on this. Let's see if this will work. Looking at the circuit diagram, there's no real reason why we can't join these two together. This is the 5 volts and the ground in the joystick. A bit naughty. There we go, like that. Now, if this kind of works, we might be able to get it to kind of do something. It's all a bit of a kind of, kind of. Ooh. So if we do left, we get the right. We didn't. We know that the other thing wasn't working. Ah. <laughs> so down flashes left. Here we go. Let's let's hold it this way. Left flashes right. Down flashes left. No fire button as of yet. That's fine. We can fix that. It does kind of work. We just got to ignore the directions and stuff. So let's just put one jump again. The fun of working with your own board. Do you know exactly how it works? Huzzah! Right, I've stopped the joystick because we know this one had a, a broken direction, so it's getting a bit confusing. So now, ah, and this is confusing because this joystick has actually configured that this button is up. It's like a up to jump, if you remember one of these, um, what they called? Uh, arcadas, retro radionic arcade. It does allow you to reconfigure the buttons, and I've configured this one as up because in a lot of the computer games on Atari STs and stuff, you didn't have a jump button. But this is the actual fire button, and you can see that's flashing the fire. So if I push up, you can see we've got up going down. That left indication is down, right and left. So let's, uh, I'm going to mark that for somebody in case, uh, so fire is F, up is OK, down is that side, down, left is that side, and this should be right. So I feel somewhat vindicated because it does kind of work. There we go. Now go make your own.